Assalamu alaikum. I am Dr. Mohammad Hassan Jafri. Today I will discuss about the systemic interpretation of ECG. Uh, so there are some points we should memorize or remember for interpretation of any ECG. Uh, at first we should look for the standardization and the lead APR. Then we should see the rate, the rhythm. By rhythm we can uh, see whether it is regular or irregular then the axis whether it is normal right axis deviation or left axis deviation then the p wave uh, whether there is any p mitrally or p pulmonary then the pr interval that is whether there is any heart block first degree second degree or uh, third degree then the st segment and t wave uh, whether there is any ST segment elevation, ST segment depression, or T wave inversion, uh, then we should see whether there is any hypertrophy, left ventricular or right ventricular, and then finally we should see whether there is any bundle branch block, that is right bundle or left bundle branch block. In this video, I will uh, talk about the first four points, that is the standardization, rate, rhythm, and axis. And in the following videos, I will try to discuss about the remaining remaining topics. So at first the standard standardization and uh, we should also see here the lead AVR. Standardization here we can say uh, any wave of ECG before any wave of ECG we can see uh, this type of thing. This is called standardization. Normally standardization uh, is a box that is present which should be 10 millimeter in height and 5 millimeter in width. That means 10 millimeter height means uh, 0.2 seconds because one small square denotes 0 0.02 second. So 10 small square denotes 0.2 seconds. And what is the importance of this standardization? Uh, the importance is that Sometimes we can see the uh, waves, that is the P wave, QRS complex is small in some ECG. And whether it is low voltage ECG or the standardization is low, uh, to detect this, we should see the standardization first. If the waves are small and the standardization is 5 millimeter in uh, height, then we can say that it is a normal ECG. But uh, when the standardization is 10 millimeter height, but the waves are small, then we can uh, uh, say that uh, this is a low voltage ECG which, which can be found in uh, obese persons or um, when the distance between the skin and the heart increases, uh, that means in uh, pictus cavitum uh, or pictus carinatum, uh, this sort of chest abnormalities and also it is normal, uh, some sort of uh, low voltage ECG is normal in case of females because of breast tissue. Uh, and now the second point we should see in an ECG is AVR. Uh, we know that AVR is situated in the right side of the body and the heart is situated in the left side. So impulse is going away from this AVR. So all the waves here are negative. T wave is negative, QRS complex negative, T wave is negative, all are negative. So we should see this at first to detect whether there is any dextrocardia or uh, situs inversus or this type of abnormalities. Uh, if there is dextrocardia or uh, situs inversus, then we can see these things are positive. P wave is positive, QRS is positive, T wave is positive in the AVI. And if there is no dextrocardia or situs inversus, but there is positive. Uh, waves in AVR, then we can uh, call it that uh, the uh, wrongly placed leads in these patients. Now the uh, point we should see, this is red. We all know that in an ECG paper, one small square denotes 0 0.04 second, five small squares denote 0 0.2 second. Uh, so one second is 25 small squares. We all know that in one second, if the papers run at a rate of 25 small squares, so or five large squares. 
So we can uh, calculate it here also that 25 small squares is one second. So one small square is one divided by 25 second, that is 0 0.04 second. Uh, and also for large square, that five large square is equal to one second. So one large square is equal to one divided by five, that is 0.2 second. So accordingly, one minute will be 25 into 60 because 60 second completes one minute. So 25 into 60, that is 1500 small squares or third, uh, 300 large squares. So how can we uh, get the rate of this ECG, uh, any ECG that uh, the formula is that rate is equal to 15,000, 1500 divided by RR interval. That means this is an R wave, this is an R wave, and in between these two R waves, there are, uh, we should calculate how many small squares are there. And we will calculate by 1500 divided by the number of small squares in between these two R waves. Also, we can uh, detect by large squares. Uh, here, uh, in, that, in that case, the formula will be 300 divided by large square in between r intervals. In this picture, in these two RR intervals, uh, between these two RR, inter, uh, RR waves, there are three large squares, we can see. So 15 small squares are there. This is the calculation in regular heart rate. When the heart rhythm is regular, then we can calculate by this formula. Okay, this is the example. Uh, we have 15 small squares, so 1500 divided by 15, that is 100. So the heart rate here is 100. Here, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 5 into 5, 25 small squares. So 1500 divided by 25 is equal to 60. Heart rate. We can also detect it by large squares. There are five large squares, so 300 by 5 is equal to 60. Same. If the heart rate is irregular, then this formula will not be applied. Then the formula will be like this that uh, we all know that one minute is uh, 60 seconds. So, 60 seconds uh, in one second. We all know that ECG paper runs 25 small squares. So, uh, in one minute, it will be 25 into 60 small squares. If we see the largest uh, large squares, then it will be 300 large squares. So, uh, we can detect it by uh, 30 large squares. 30 large squares means 6 seconds because 300 large squares is 60 seconds. So 30 large squares is 6 seconds. So we can see 30 large squares anywhere. So in these 30 large squares, how many RR waves are there? So uh, suppose we have found uh, 10 large uh, 10 RR waves in 30 large squares. So the heart rate will be 13 to 10 that is 300 large square and 10 into 10 100 okay so here is written that if the rhythm is irregular rr interval will be different in that case the number of r waves in the 30 large squares that is 300 means 60 seconds 30 means 6 seconds should be counted and multiply the number by 10 because 16 to 10, 60 seconds, 6 into 10, 60 seconds, and 13 to 10, 300 large squares. That means one minute. So, multiplying the number by 10 to get the approximate heart rate per minute. Now, we will see the rhythm. So, rhythm may be regular or irregular, and how to detect this regularity or irregularity of the rhythm? We should see the uh, waves and intervals of an ECG. At first, we can see the P wave, whether it is followed by QRS complex or not. We should see the PR interval, whether it is normal or constant or not constant. 
uh, we should see the uh, pivot morphology also. We will see the RR interval also. If the RR interval is regular, then we can say that it is a regular rhythm. And if the RR interval is irregular, then the uh, rhythm is irregular. Now, the axis. Axis is very important and interesting thing of this uh, I will show you uh, another picture here. So this is a uh, circle and uh, we all know in the previous, uh, by the previous video is that lead one is directed in this way, lead two is directed in this way, which is in the apex, which is according to the apex of the heart and uh, lead three is in the this way, which is uh, away from the heart, AVL in this, this way, AVR in this way, AVL in directly downwards. The heart is situated actually in the left side. So in the, this, uh, the, in this portion of this circle, actually the heart, uh, actually the apex of the heart situates uh, here. So if we uh, see that the heart is situated here, so this is actually the normal axis and actually lead two is denoting the normal and perfect axis of the heart. So we can say that lead one and lead AVF here in this portion, in between this portion, in between lead one and lead AVF is the normal axis of the heart. This is lead one, so this is 180 degree opposite of lead one, that is negative lead one. This is AVF, so this is 180 degree opposite of the AVF, so this is negative. So if we find that in an uh, in a particular ECG, uh, the waves in the lead one and the lead AVF both are positive, then the heart is in the normal axis. Now, if we see that the waves in the lead one is negative, but waves in the AVF is positive, then what will uh, how will be the uh, where will be the point actually? AVF is positive in this portion of the circle, in this portion of the hemicircle, AVF is positive, and one is negative in this portion of the hemicircle. So the common portion is this portion. This portion is common. So this is the portion where lead one is negative, but AVF is positive. So if we find that lead one is negative and AVF is positive, this is right axis deviation. See that heart apex of the heart was here and it is deviated to this side. So this is called this is actually in the right side according to the body. So this it is called right axis deviation, and in this portion, one is negative, lead one, and AVF is positive. And see in this portion, one is positive and AVF is negative because this is positive AVF, this is negative AVF. So if the one uh, lead one uh, waves in the lead one is positive, but this uh, uh, waves in the lead AVF is negative, then it is left axis deviation. See that apex was here, so it is coming more left. This is the left side, so it is coming more left of the body. So it is left axis deviation. So this portion is left axis deviation, and lead one here is positive, and mathematically ABF here is positive. So in this portion, ABF will be negative. So now come to the theory that if we find that both in lead one and lead ABF, the waves are positive, P wave is positive, here Q wave is positive, QR is positive, QR is positive. So it is normal. If we see that in lead one, this is negative, but in ABF, QRS is positive. So this is right axis deviation. And if we see that in lead one, QRS is positive, but in AVF, QRS is negative. So it is left axis deviation. See the photo here, the photo of ECG. Uh, you can see that these 
this is one and this is avf so here one is negative but avf is positive so it is static situation and here one is positive but avf is negative so it is left axis deviation here positive means more positivity in the qrx negative means more negativity in the qrx so this is actually the axis deviation now i want to see you another photo uh, this is actually mnemonic so i am telling you in the last uh, in the last portion of the video we have all uh, learned to count the rate of the ecg but this is a short technique that if there is one large square between two ROS, then the heart rate is 300 two large squares in between ROS, heart rate is 150 three large squares in between ROS, heart rate is 100 four large squares in between ROS, heart rate is 75 five ROS, in, uh, five large squares in between ROS, the heart rate is 60 and uh, six large squares in between ROS, then the heart rate will be 50 here the heart rate there is five are uh, five large squares in between two ROS, so it will be 60 is the short technique we should remember 300 150 100 25 60 and, 50. and then we'll count the large squares so this was to this uh, today's video uh, hope you have enjoyed i have used the uh, learn ECG in a day, which is the main book we have to, which I have used. Also, I have used uh, some lecture notes, some some respective features. So, hope you have enjoyed the videos. Thank you.